All right, once again, I'm going to have to intro this because we're, we're reacting today and people are going to be like, what the heck is going on? I'm raising money for charity for the American Heart Association. Um, and one of the goals is to wear uh, this silly costume of my favorite vegetable, ketchup. Okay, so we're we're wearing that while we react today. But um, there will be a donation link down below if you guys want to support it if you're watching this on YouTube. But we are going to be reacting to a video from Board Gamer, and uh, we've already watched some other content from some other creators around the Chris Roberts post. So we're going to be following all that. This one's from Board Gamer. Chris Roberts promises dramatic changes to Star Citizen. That is, yeah, the promises and the it's it's setting us up for for failure here, Board. But let's see what he's got to say. Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Chris Roberts has responded to a content creator, Terrida, and I wanted to talk about what he was talking about there because he alludes to things that are happening for Squadron 42 and Star Citizen and CitizenCon, and it's nice that Chris has responded to someone, but Chris doesn't come out of the box very often. So Terrida is a really big French streamer and YouTuber, and he makes a whole range of awesome Star Citizen content, some of the best. He recently posted on really the does. Spectrum forums about quality of life improvements. It was a nice, concise post going over a lot of stuff. And let me read you the sort of um, blurb of it. Over the last few weeks, we've noticed that CIG seemed to be interested in improving players' comfort, quality of life. My community and I have gathered as many interesting ideas as possible that could improve the qual. Let us know if these resonate with you as well. I filtered out the ideas about features that are already being redesigned. Maybe Glass Star Map Quantum, for example, so that we can focus on features for which we don't have any information at the moment. This is the work of hundreds of active players, mainly within the French community. By posting on Spectrum, we hope that you would rally us, support these ideas. And I mean, like, guys, return buttons to keep doors open by locking them in ships. Like, yes, these are quality of life changes, but I, I, I just keep looking at the list and it's like, yeah, it's a list of a lot of things, um, but in general, what, what does quality of life actually mean? Um, it's like kind of avoiding a lot of bugs, right? That would be the, the thing there would be avoiding a lot of bugs. Uh, Karmic Joke, thank you so much. I saw that. I appreciate it. Uh, that that would be a lot of it. But things like, you know, the, the locking doors, yes, it's quality of life stuff. But, man, it, it's, it's almost like, I wonder where the game would be if, if we just generally had, like, party markers working and VoIP and, like, just, like, basic you know, the, just the basics. And add your own new quality. Like, all these are legitimate. I'm not saying they're not, but yeah. of life suggestions. Thank you for your time. And then, basically, there's a ton of really good quality of life suggestions yeah, from search bars in the key customization menu to displaying the names of your different hotas setups and controller devices to an option to clear the shader cache directly from the launcher really nice post really good as well that to start a conversation good. about quality of life and look at what players want for quality of life what they've noticed what they think is a needing improvement and me the thing is though guys is they take a feedback thread from every single patch and we all have the opportunity to write that feedback thread every patch. And we do. Right? Like, we do. So it, it's just like, I, I, I don't know what else to, to say. They gather, they get feedback every single patch. What do they do with it? Like, here's the deal about this whole Tarada post. Is he gets this recognition from chris roberts which is awesome to, to actually hear chris and have him come out and do all those things but they take a feedback thread every single they take feedback threads throughout evo through ptu and live and what do they do with them right immediately what can wait a little bit longer Doesn't community matter. manager zylo picked up on this thread almost immediately and said awesome post and many of these are on our priority list already too i've shared all of these suggestions with the right people on our team thanks for this but then the next day chris roberts turned up let's see what he had to say hi derrida i just wanted to thank you for your suggestions for quality of life on star citizen also your incredibly awesome flying and video capture skills whenever i want to show someone the huge
Dude, he he loves Tarada. It's so funny. Of things you can do in Star Citizen, your low flying or 100 people get together videos on YouTube are part of the links I share. When I started the journey on Star Citizen over 10 years ago, I never imagined such dynamic and beautiful footage showing off both what the technology of Star Citizen can do, and more importantly, what players can do in the huge sandbox we are building. Back to your post, seeing tight, concise construction. As I said in my initial uh, reaction to this to this post. Um, you know, what, what is the sandbox that they're building, right? There's lots of sandbox games. Uh, they, they work on a lot of the sandbox tools, but they don't, um, add any sand to the sandbox, right? There's no sand. Like it, it's just, this is the sandbox. Are you ready? That's the sandbox. Right? Or this. Maybe this is the sandbox. Or this. That's all the backers. Trying to play in the sandbox. Dead. Okay. Constructive feedback like this is super helpful. I also want you to know that I pay attention to the community's feedback, as well as feedback by various Star Citizen content creators. This year has been an especially difficult one in terms of stability and quality of life due to the rollout of persistent entity streaming, PEZ, in 3.18 at the beginning of the year. The whole way uh, yes. we tracked and recorded... Yes, we could still use PEZ as an excuse in August, September, October of 2023 after saying it will be delivered by the end of the year in 2022. The state of the universe changed dramatically, yes. which also changed the way we handle Let's data in the back end in the cloud. Because of how we record state with persistent entity streaming, we needed to switch to a different kind of back end database. So we moved from a SQL, relational database, to a graph database. Unfortunately, the graph database we selected, despite being one of the best rated ones and intended for enterprise scale, has major issues at load, causing the database to lock up and all the queries from the game servers to stall out. This happened on the 3.18 launch, where it took us a lot of effort to stabilize, including some engineering on our side, to lessen the load on the database. We thought we had this My issue solved, broke but ankle. the most recent version of the database software was a step backwards, and we've had additional lockups at load, which was what happened for periods on Wednesday, just after we launched 3.20 and on Thursday, Friday, and very briefly on Saturday. We rolled back to an older version and disabled some of the features last night that we suspect may be contributing to the instability. Ironically, we think the replication nice. to mirror databases for full redundancy is the culprit to the database lockout. The replication to mirror databases. See, when they say replication, I'm like replication there. I don't think that's what it is, though. It just sounds like... Um something in their in their thing and and what a lot of people were saying is that that you know we heard in when i when i was reacting to another video about this is it's most likely not the database i mean the database could have a bug or something right it's possible but it's more likely the way they use it and it doesn't really work for the way they use it right and and there could be a bug related to that um but I can't imagine that this incredibly highly rated third-party database company, um, you know, has major issues like this. Uh, with other companies, right? So the thing is, is Chris is shifting everything towards this company and not like zero on themselves.
backups. This looks to have stabilized things. The backend database getting into a bad state manifests in multiple ways to infinitely loading inventory windows, missing items and degraded game performance. We went with an off the shelf enterprise level database for stability and resistance as there is already a lot of new tech in Star Citizen. So it's frustrating as the software that should be rock solid is the biggest offender in making Star Citizen's experience even more unreliable. We have the top engineer I mean, let's be real. You're the biggest defender, Chris, but like the, maybe the second biggest is from defender, the database okay? company working on this. And we are also assessing other databases to switch to if the unreliability of the current solution continues. One way or another, we intend to have this solved in the very near term and the game coming back to 3.17.x stability levels. We are also very focused on improving quality of life, both annoying bugs. You know, they they intend to have this solved in the very... Their intentions are, right? And then my intention is, and then Chris Roberts promises in the title. This is what's wrong with the Star Citizen community. ...that have been around for way too long and some things that we need to address to make the experience fun and welcoming. Your list is great in this respect as a lot of your suggestions are on our list too. We did get some quality of life fixes in 3.20 like the quantum travel HUD being lined up properly oh. but not nearly as much as the team or I would like. We will be working Thank on God knocking for the out bugs and improving quality of life pretty continuously from here on out. There is a lot of great tech and features that we're bringing into Star Citizen from Squadron 42 that will dramatically change the feel and polish of Star Citizen. For instance, a lot of your suggestions in the in-game comfort and readability have been addressed by the changes we made for Squadron 42. The they seriously keep calling like the quantum HUD thing is good, but they keep calling it out like it, it is it was the biggest quality of life offender that we've ever experienced. <laughs> plan has always been to bring this work into Star Citizen. Squadron 42 was just a good way for us to focus and really polish the feel and usability without the pressure. How long before a board goes insane? Guys, you, what don't you understand about a board gamer video? Board gamer has literally just read a post. And then how many views does this video have? Oh, uh, just a casual 21k views. No problem. There's no going insane. This man is doing it the best way possible he literally just reads a post posts a video makes a thumbnail and then goes and plays other video games sure of maintaining functionality as we iterated on it for the always live environment it's, it's of like the persistent the, universe we like now have hit an inflection point in, in the world. 42's development that allows us to start be, bringing this hater. work into star citizen in the near future. You're just I'm very hating. excited for CitizenCon as we will be sharing a lot of these features and more. It will be great in front of a live crowd and spending time with the community in person. It's been four years since the last in-person CitizenCon. Right. It's also been four years since the last time he, um, he made a post on Spectrum. <laughs> wow. So I love the fact that Chris Roberts has turned up and actually given a response. Obviously, Terada, very big content creator, um, streamer for the French community, big rallying point there. I was certain this post was going to get uh, a response from uh, various devs, but I did not expect Chris Roberts to turn up because he does not come out very often. We used to see Chris all of the time in various shows and letters from the chairman and talking to the community, but as CIG have become larger and more corporate, Chris seems to be doing those letters from the chairman and I'm um, actually coming to the community less and less. That said, they sort of wheel him out for very special occasions and citizen cons and an occasional letter from the chairman, maybe like twice a year. What I really liked in that letter is that he outlines and tells us why they had problems with 3.18 and persistent entity streaming in a reasonable amount of detail and explains exactly what happened. Respect, board. Respect. Me he said 3.18. Right? Board said, why we're having problems with 318. This isn't just a now problem. This is like, it's been a problem and they continue to make it. With 3.20's launch, why we had some so many sort of problems as it launched. They are also saying, look, we, we've identified the problem. We know what's going wrong with it. We'll fix it in one way or another. We're just trying to work out which way is the most sensible. I do yep. think it is a shame that the sort of 3.20 patch when it was on the PTU, really great, awesome quality of life patch and sort of a polished 
patch, but breaks on the servers on live. 3.20.0a has addressed a load of the problems in 3.20, admittedly, and all these other sort of things that Cloud Imperium have done recently have made the position universe a load more stable again, but there are still issues, and some players are having lots of issues, other players not so much. Obviously, Arena Commander working fantastically, Persistent Universe sometimes working fantastically. The I mean, Arena Commander sometimes working fantastically. I'm getting 30Ks in Arena Commander, so like, you know... If if we think our servers are in, in a great place, uh, you know, think otherwise. Problem is at certain times of the day and at load. We do know that Squadron 42 has actually made a huge amount of progress and it's getting quite near the end of its development cycle. And it's good to hear that they are at an, an inflection point where they are able to now get more and more of these Squadron 42 um, more fleshed out features into Star Citizen's persistent universe, which is what a lot of us want. I, I think a lot of people want to see Squadron 42, but I think there's a huge amount more, um, a load more players that are in it for Star Citizen's Persistent Universe over Squadron 42. 100%. Citizen Con, we're going to know a lot. Like, how? what do you think the percentage of people that backed specifically for Star Citizen versus squadron it's i think it's a really large percentage at this point more obviously a load of squadron all the advertising is on squadron or is on um i think it's over 70 I, th I think it's probably more towards 80 20 i mean the the advertising is is all star citizen which is are um looking to be completed just before citizen con i think between now and the next couple of weeks at least according to the roadmap at the moment so obviously that could change it is the biggest citizen con they've ever had but what do you think about what chris said do you believe that they're going to be able to get 3.20 or the end of year patch into a um, really good level of stability with 3.17.x x stability levels as they said no. do you believe we are i i really don't because there's still there's still features that need to be added to the game um, so we still have, you know, vehicle tractor beams and other things. Guys, how many features were added to this patch? And let me tell you something. Do you really think the additional bugs that have been added to this game, like, I don't know, being able, not being able to refuel and rearm are due to the database? Or do you think it's due to, you know, general, uh, generally being in alpha and continuing to add features to the game? There's been very few features added to this game, and this game is buggy beyond the database issues, even in comparison to 319. The known issues list is insanely long, and not all of those known issues are related to the database issues that Chris points out. This feels very smoke and mirrors on a lot of the things that we're dealing with. It's not just the database. Okay, the database is the biggest offender for the problems that we dealt with. The database is what kept you out of the game when you wanted to play. The database is what broke the inventories. But there, they went live with 320 with people unable to repair, refuel, and rearm. Okay? That's all you need to know. Are at an inflection point. So the start of the Star Citizen boom cycle. So, so do I think... That they're going to get to levels of 3.17 stability? No. Call for features. What do you think we're going to actually see at CitizenCon? And what do you think about Chris Roberts coming out and saying all of this? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. But the, the, um, yeah, that's the, that's it. It's, it's as simple as that where it's... It feels a little smoke and mirrors. It could definitely be the problems. All the stuff I believe, I be literally believe Chris Roberts that they want to do these things, but it just comes down to doing them. And it's only going to matter if you do them. So just want to see the work actually happen. And that's it.